the end of this week, you have at least some script that will be some script that will be uh, you can reuse, especially in the rest of uh, the program, if suppose you choose so, so that uh, when you reuse that script, you can reuse it to um, clean other types of data or data sets that you will be given in the future. And you can also reuse it in um, uh, transforming and also in the extraction. So um, we have got a data set here, which we have um, um, uploaded and read called DB. So we are just um, here, we are trying to uh, view what type of data that we have from um, the, the data set that we have here, we, as we can see the head of, uh, of this data, we can be able to see the number of columns that it has. Um, well, of course, here it gives us only the first five um, co uh, rows of, of, of that data set. So when we look at the head of um, the data set that we have here, we can see that we have the encounter ID, the patient NBR, the race of that patient, um, uh, the gender, the age, the weight, the admission uh, type ID, discharge, disposition, admission source, um, and we can go ahead to count the different um, uh, variables that we've been given in this data set. So um, before cleaning a data set, you need to explore what has been stored in, in that data set. By exploring uh, what has been stored in the data set, we are trying to get the column names of that data set, how many data points it has, and the number of columns that that data set um, also has. Uh, all these questions are important to answer so that we can um, see the need for whatever is contained in, in the data set that we have. So uh, we can see from here, if you want to get the names of uh, the data set that we, we've been given, we can just uh, uh, use the code b.columns to do list, uh, to list. So it gives us a list of all the columns that, um, the list of the names of the columns that we have in that particular data set. And we can see that there's a very big list here of um, that data set. So by looking at this, uh, the names of the columns that are there in this list, we are able to see that what type of, um, what type of, um, or what type of variables are we be, have, have we been given with the data set that we have. So uh, also for a better understanding of the columns, we need to explore the data description. You can, um, in, in, in the challenge that has been given this week, there's a data description that, um, a link to the data description that was also provided. So if you go to that um, link of, um, um, if you go to that link of, of the data description, you will be able to see um, the description of each and every column for the data set that uh, was given. Um, yeah, I think if you, are, if, if you can see my, my, my screen, you can see um, in, in, in the challenge that was given, uh, the features described can be found here. If you click on that link, it will, it will take you to the features and the descriptions of each and every feature uh, that was uh, given in, in, the, in the challenge for, for this week. So, um, after understanding um, the features of or the, the features of the columns that have been given in that data set, we can go ahead now to look at if we have um, missing data in, in, in the data set that we have been given. Um, also, you can have a look and um, you can um, see the number of data points the data set that you've been given um, has. So in, in our example here today, we can see that when we want to find the number of um, data points that we have, we can see that the data set that we are using has got 101,766 rows, but it also has 50 columns. So, um, we can just be able to print that by db.shape, the rows that it has, and also db.shape, 
uh, one, that is the number of columns that, that um, uh, our data set has. So how do we handle, um, the next question that comes is how do we handle missing data? Um, it is one of the big questions that um, uh, companies are trying to answer because sometimes we get uh, certain types of data sets, but we realize that there is a huge uh, gap in the data that, um, or that there are huge um, missing data points that we have in our data. So sometimes the data that you have, if it has got so much of huge or a huge number of missing data, then the data may not be useful, especially when you are creating models or when you want to make when, when you want to make some kinds of predictions. So it is important that we also have a look and understand that um, the data set that we've been given, um, does it have missing data in, in it? And if it does have missing data, how do we handle those missing data? Um, so in, in our example here today, we are trying to find uh, the percentage of the missing data that we have in the, um, the, the, the complete data set or the entire data set that we have been given. So um, we are trying to calculate the total number of cells in, in, in that data frame. We count the number of missing values uh, in each and every column that we've been given. We also uh, calculate the total number of, of the missing values. Um, and um, after finding the total number of the missing values, now we can be able to print to, um, to see the percentage of the missing values that, that we have. So with that, uh, we, we, we can be able to see that the data set that we have been given, what percentage of it does, is, is it that we are having that is missing? Um, that is to mean um, the, the complete or the entire data set that we have uh, compared to the ones that are missing. What percentage is missing in the entire of the complete data set? So with us here, we can find that um, the diabetes data set that we have here has got 7.35% of the missing of missing values. Now we also um, tried to try to look at uh, this missing data that we have. Um, what 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 missing values or what is the number of missing data in each and every column? So we try to understand that um, of, the, of all the columns that we have been given, uh, what is the missing value in each and every column? So from here, we can be able to see um, db.isnal, that is is an a uh, dot sum. So it sums up all, it sums up the missing values in each and every column. So from here we can be see we can be able to see um, the number of, of um, the missing um, data in each and every column that we have. We can see for the column um, encounter ID there is no missing value. Patient and BR there is no missing value. It's represented by zero. At trace we have 2,273 missing um, values, and like that, like that, as we can be able to see in the complete or the entire um, of the data set that, that we have here. So we look like, um, well, it looks like some of the columns are, um, has a lot of, of, of the missing values, while others, um, especially towards um, down here, we can see that there are no missing values. But there are some uh, of the columns that have got a huge number of missing values, like A1 crescent, a one C result where we have around eighty four thousand seven hundred and eight seven hundred and forty eight uh, missing values. We have here max blue serum. We have ninety six thousand four hundred and twenty um, missing values. So um, the next thing that we need to answer or we need to consider after looking at the number of um, or the missing values in each and every column, we need to fix these missing values so that we be able to um, work with uh, the data set that we have been given. It is important to consider that when you want to fill the missing values, sometimes 
there are data sets that um, there are a lot of missing values and that particular column perhaps you will not need it in your prediction or you it is not important in the type of analysis that you are going to use so sometimes you can decide to drop that particular column um, sometimes you can decide to uh, fix that particular um, column by either um, you try to forward fill, you try to backward fill, or you try to insert those missing value using the median or you use the mean, or maybe you can use the mod. So um, it is important to understand the type of challenge that you're working with so that you are able to make um, able to make um, good interpretations or good decisions, especially when you want to uh, drop or you want to forward fill or you want to fix the missing values. So fixing missing values is crucial part or in, of any data science or machine learning project because you might be making the, the data better by your own methods or otherwise. So your decision has to be perfect or it has to be um, close close enough to be perfect. So that is why it is important for someone to understand um, the type, the challenge that they're working with and what results you want to achieve with the type of data set that you have been given. The rule thumb is for all object data types, uh, all object data type kind of um, column or features use the mode method to fill the missing data points. And for um, the number of kinds of features, use the mean or you can use the median method. This, the question now is uh, how to choose which method to fill a number of the a number feature with. Well, uh, the simple answer is uh, you need to check um, if the data set or if that type of um, uh, the column that you want to fix is, is skewed. Now, uh, in statistics, I know what uh, I know. We all understand what it means by uh, skew. Um, uh, whether the data set is uh, skewed to the right, that is in terms of the distribution of the number of points that you've been given. Is it skewed to the right or is it skewed to the left um, in terms of you finding the mean? Back to the rule thumb. If the data is not skewed, filling with either the mean or medium will work well. But if it is indeed skewed, then fill with the medium. Um, I mean, the, the idea is um, you check for that type of or the, 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 the missing value of the type of column that you're working with, and you try to look at the distribution of the data points that you've been given. So if it is uh, not skewed, meaning that it is uh, normally distributed, so you will uh, you can fill the missing values with either the mean or the median, and that would work well. So other methods of um, dealing with the missing values exists, like you can forward fill or you can backward fill, etc. So um, you also need to consider um, what the column represents before you fill the missing values. For example, um, you, you need to um, understand that um, what is it that this column is, is representing uh, so that you are able to understand whatever you, you want to fill, uh, either you want to backward fill or you want to forward fill. If it represents the age of that um, the group of, of whatever, or like, for example, in this data set that we have, we have the patient's names and their IDs, and we also have what we call the age for that patient. So you have to understand for the column of the age, um, what is it that I want to fill? Do I want to, am I feeling for the age, uh, or what is it that I'm feeling for? Um, some of the time also uh, say that you can decide to drop um, missing values. Uh, so if the missing value, uh, the missing um, data, the, the, the missing data that you have there 
sometimes it is too huge and you will not need it uh, in your modeling or in your analysis that you're doing, uh, you could decide to drop it. So like for example, here in our data set that we have, we have decided to drop all the data sets that have 30% of the missing values. Um, not the data set, but the columns that have 30% um, of the missing values. That is drop columns with more than 30% of the missing values. So um, we can just be able to see um, uh, the data sets that have more than 30% of missing values and then we list them and then we use the um, DB dot drop, and then we are able to drop um, uh, the, the columns that have 30% of missing values. So uh, when we when we look at the shape of our data again, now we can see that uh, this is the number. This is the shape that it has. It has 101,766 rows, and it also has 45 columns. So we have been able to drop five columns out of um, the ones that we had in the initial data frame that the data set that we were given. Uh, this is also uh, if you want to fill missing um, missing values with the forward fill method for the columns um, um, that is diagnosis one and diagnosis two, diagnosis three. Uh, we um, are trying to fix this using um, the forward fill. So our our um, uh, function here for fix the missing values with the forward forward fill, and then we return um, the data frame. So, so, so we we can be able to actually use this um, method forward fill to fill um, the, the missing values. <clears throat> also, we can use also the backward fill so that we fill also the missing values uh, as we can see from here, uh, the uh, fix missing values for the field, for the field, for the field, <clears throat> uh, so that we are able to fill um, the missing values forward. Um, by, by forward fill, I mean that the, 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 the data that is coming before the one um, that is missing. So it 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 um, it it goes to the place or it is duplicated to the place that is missing. So other other missing columns can be fixed on your understanding, uh, so that you are able to decide to either drop or fill using the appropriate methods, whichever you choose. You decide, but it is important also so that it is important for you to explain the reason why you are either using a forward fill or uh, why you are using a backward fill or why you have decided to drop um, that kind of a column. It, it is important for you to, to give your reasons for, for doing that. Um, so the next thing is uh, how do we, uh, in understanding our data, how now do we transform the data? In the transformation of the data, we have two things which are sometimes confusing. We have what is called scaling and we have uh, normalization. So what is the difference? In scaling, you are changing the range of your data. You're changing the range of, of, your, of, of, of your data that, that you've been given. While in normalization, you are changing the shape of, uh, of the distribution of, of, of your data. So um, it is important to get to understand the difference between scaling of the data and um, scaling of the data and uh, normalization of, of the data. So this means that in, in, in scaling, uh, you are transforming your data so that uh, it fits within a specific scale. Like you're giving it a scale, either a scale of zero up to 100, or you're giving it a scale of zero up to one. When you're dealing with the week, uh, this week's challenge, you will get to understand that um, you are given um, a data set um, and you are trying to see that for how long has this person been using this type of uh, this type of app or so 
in 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 a particular set and you're able to see like someone could be using it for one hour someone has been using it for 30 minutes and you have to get to a, a given scale in which you will have to uh, place all these people so that um a good example that we have been given here is is for the case of uh, um, the yens and the us dollars so if perhaps the currencies are given in um, US dollars and also the currencies are given in yens. Uh, we understand that one US dollar is about uh, around um, about 100 yens. So you have to place um, them to um, a given scale in which they are they, they all fit. Like for example, you will not be able. You see, they, they will only come out as digits. So one yen. If perhaps you have not scaled your data one yen, one uh, or yen will be the same as you saying one uh, one dollar because all of them are one. But in the real sense, they are not the same. So you have to give them the same scale in which they they both fit, so so that um, you are able to tell that a hundred yens uh, is equivalent to one U.S. dollar. Um, this clearly it, um, this clearly will give you um, a better understanding of of your data so that uh, it doesn't give you um, um, disparity especially when you will you will be doing your analysis so you when you want to you want to scale the data that you're using uh, you can use uh, the, using the methods that are based on measures on how far apart the data points are. Like uh, you can use the support vector machines or K nearest neighbors, that is KNN. Uh, with these algorithms, um, you can change one in any numeric feature um, to uh, in any given to be the same, the same importance. Uh, by the same importance, of, I'm, just, I'm just trying to explain that um, 100 yens uh, is the same as one dollar. So you give them the same scale in which you measure both of them. So for example, you, you also understand that maybe uh, someone could be representing time in seconds, another person could be representing time in minutes. So you give all these ones the same amount of scale so that you uh, are able to understand uh, or you, you have the same measure of scale in which you're using for the data set. So um, in transformation of the data, you can use the scikit-learn pre-processing, import, min, max, scalar, and then you are able to uh, give, or you're able to, you will be able to produce, um, uh, let, let's give the example that you're using here, we, we are able to produce the same amount of, the same data, the same uh, data, the same scale of data that it's being used here. So these ones are just uh, generated randomly so that we have the same scale for for all of them. Um, well, while while we are doing that, it's also important to know. Um, it's also important to to know the 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 difference. Um, or how, how how your data is is actually it will also give you an understanding of how your data is distributed. By that I mean um, fifty seconds of distribution is not the same as fifty minutes of distribution. So it's important to it it will give you a very better understanding of how your data is is distributed at the end. So. Um, so here we are trying to understand how uh, uh, the scale that is used and uh, the original data and the scale data for um, the data set that we have. So let's also look at normalization of uh, the data. Scaling just changes the range of your data, but normalization is, more is a more radical trans uh, transformation um the points of normalization is to change your observations so that you can uh, so that they can be described as normal distribution 
uh, normal distribution uh, is the one that is bell curved. Uh, uh, I am pretty sure we understand the statistics and the distribution. So uh, we know that normal distribution, um, the mean is always uh, almost at the middle there. Um, and it has the highest, I think, around the highest number of distribution. So it is, um, it starts um, with a lower distribution, climbs up, and then ends with the lower distribution again. So normal distribution, we understand it's the bell curve, and this is a specific statistical distribution where um, roughly equal observations uh, fall on either sides of um, of, uh, of the distribution uh, from the mean. So in, in general, uh, you'll normalize your data if you are uh, going to be using machine learning or statistics techniques that assumes your data is normally distributed. Some examples of this include uh, the linear discriminant analysis, LDA, and the Gaussian um, naive base. So um, it's, it's important to that's why I come back to the point where I, uh, I still tell you it's important for you to understand um, whatever you want to achieve at the end of the day so that you are able to uh, get to uh, use these normalizations. Um, to be able to transform your data in a better way. So the method that you will be using to normalize here is called the normalizer method for um, the SKLearn. Let us take a quick peek um, at how this works. So um, we, we, we've been able to see how the original data was distributed and we want that this data to be normalized. So we write a function that is going to normalize our data and then uh, with this function, uh, we are going to uh, normalize the data that we have and then we fit transform that data frame. So, and then after that, we are just plotting together so that we are able to see how we have been able to normalize the, the data set that we have. So from here, we, we, we can be able to see uh, the data set and the distribution before it is normalized. This is the original data that we have. After that, we, uh, after it has been normalized, we can see um, the distribution. It is at one, each, each and every one of them is uh, has got the same um, the same kind of um, uh, um, distribution or they're equally distributed. So um, from here we can also check the data types so that we can be able to we know what data types that we are working with in each and every column that we have um, so that it can give us a better understanding. Most of the data types here we can be able to see that integer we have object yeah we have object object most of them are integer and object data frame so we are able to see from all the 45 columns that we have um, the different data types that we have for um, our data set so um, here we also um, here we are trying to just fix the edge of, um, of, of, of of our data set that we we have uh, after that, we uh, be, will be able to have our clean data and we can be able to uh, see from our clean data, uh, we can be able to see from our clean data uh, the, district, the, um, the data types that we have, the information, just basically the information of the clean data, um, that we, the data that we've already cleaned information that we have about it so we can be able to see um the null count and the the data types that um they have so um after that these are just some other utility functions that you can use that is a function to calculate the missing values by by the columns uh, you understand that up there we had already seen um uh, the, the number of uh, data points that were missing in each and every column that we had. So we are able to, uh, this utility function is able to calculate for us um, the different um, 
it's able to calculate for us the missing values in each and every column that, that we have for our data set. Uh, we also have um, uh, to change the format of um, the data sets, find the aggregations of the data set, convert bits to megabits, uh, and things like that. Then we get to now extract um, our data. Uh, you can readmit it. This data set is actually trying to, um, we are trying to understand the data that we have here. And uh, our main goal is to look at the patients who are readmitted to um, the hospital. So we are able to extract and see the diabetes data set contains that one, yeah. Percentage of the missing values, name readmitted, um, data types. Um, uh, we are also able to see the missing values uh, of um, our clean data frame. Um, yeah, um, and I think that would be all for trying to understand how we clean our data, how we transform our data, and how we um, are able to extract different uh, things that we want from um, the data that we have been given. So just to recap uh, in a few minutes, I'd say that it is important for you to understand the challenge that you are working on. After understanding the challenge that you're working on or whatever you want to achieve, it is important for someone to understand the data that you have. By understanding the data, you have to get to know the shape of that data. How many columns does it have? How many rows that it, does it have? After understanding to, after getting to understand those ones, you also get to understand the, 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 the columns or the different um, variables that you've been given in that data frame, in that data set that you've been given. So after understanding that, you also get to understand the missing data that uh, you have in your in your data that you have, the data set that you've been given. If after doing that, you now will be able to clean the data uh, you can decide to drop some of the missing values. You can decide to forward fill um, or backward fill. And that, that just means you are able, you are trying to fix the missing values. So after trying to, after fixing those missing values, it is important for someone to uh, transform the data, giving the data the sense scale and also uh, normalizing the data that you have, the data set that you have. After doing that, now you can be able to proceed to extract um, the data that you have been given. So um, I think that is basically what we have for today. Maybe I um, uh, well, want to welcome questions so that you see. Yes, Martin, you have something. All right, uh, thank you for the lesson. Uh, it was uh, very informative. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, proceed. All right. Uh, I was asking when uh, doing the filling, uh, do we incorporate the the pipelines or uh, like doing when, when just doing those transformations and the fillings? Uh, Incorporating, incorporating the pipelines, is it necessary at that point? Yes, that's my question. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, it is, it is important to, um, it is important to, um, to, to do that. The pipeline, it is, it is important to incorporate it, especially when you are, um, after after getting to understand uh, whatever you, um, whether you're going to do the forward fill or the backward fill, it is important for you to incorporate the into into the pipeline so that you um, the data set that you are going to have at the end of it is uh, a, a clean data set. Um, yeah, I, I hope you understand. Um, at the end of the day, you're not going to have again some of the missing values. So it is important to include it in your in your pipeline. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, we have Biniam. 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, Desmond, for the lesson. Uh, my question is, uh, can you explain exactly why we need normalization? What's the purpose of normalization? Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. So, um, it is it is important for you to normalize your your data uh, because some of the time you will realize that um, your data is skewed to a particular or um, a given um, direction, and when you are going to do your prediction uh, or you want to do your um, model. Uh, you will realize that you wouldn't love that your data to or your your model to be inclined to a particular um, a particular set or a particular given direction, but you want to produce uh, a model that um, that is uh, is fit. Or for example, if you're doing an, an analysis and um, you find that. In a certain area, people are, um, um, are skewed, or the data set that you're collecting, people are skewed to a certain particular type of belief. You will have to normalize this data so that uh, each and every one's um, or given, um, given, given all, all the factors considered, you are able to see that you, you will be making uh, an informed perspective of analysis or uh, um, I, I'm just lacking a very good example to give, but it is important for you to uh, normalize your data so that you, when, when you're going to produce your model that you're going to work with, it is not inclined to a given uh, particular um, direction, meaning that you're able to produce one that is uh, working in a normal way. I'm not sure if that um, gives you a better answer. I don't have a very good example to give. Okay, thank you. Or I will look into it more okay. deeply. Okay. Do we have someone else with um, a question? Yes, Rafa. Rafa? Yes. Uh, maybe if you're speaking, I cannot hear you, Rafa. Okay, I saw some question maybe in the chat box. Let me see. Um, if you're going to do this in a single file or separately, so if you if you read the the challenge for this week also, you will get you will see that one of the expectations is that you be able to come up with a script that you can reuse, especially for um, the next uh, um, the other. Uh, the other challenges, maybe if you, um, the other challenges that you'll be having, especially for uh, the data cleaning, the data transformation and extraction, it is important um, that maybe if you're able to come up with a script that is going to help you so that you can, um, you can, you can be able to reuse it. Uh, so you can decide to do it in a single file or you can decide to just write a script that you're going to use. Uh, we have uh, Rafa. You have raised your hand. Rafa.
uh, what what I mean by uh, a script. Um, what I mean by a script is that uh, it is a code that you you can reuse. You can um, just uh, um, you can um, reuse it. Not necessarily you writing again the code from scratch. You can just include it as uh, that is what I mean by the term uh, a script. Uh, it is just a code that uh, you can be able to reuse in your other projects that you will be having. Uh, you're asking if it is required to use Google Colab. Um, you can use Google Colab. Uh, um, as, as we said, I think in week zero, whatever you prefer best for you. You can use Google Colab if you want to use Google Colab. You can prefer to use um, the notebooks from your Anaconda, or you can just write, um, uh, um, yeah, a Python uh, code in, in your machine. Just um, maybe script.py so that you be using that uh, maybe scripting for that code in your other projects. It depends on what you want to use. Rafael, you are, I think, okay. Okay, maybe, 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 um, Rafael, you can maybe type if maybe your, your mic is not working. You're asking uh, if there is a specific percentage of missing values so we can drop the columns or it's dependent on the situation. So uh, Rafa, I think it's it's dependent on the situation because I cannot give you a specific answer that if you uh, have this kind of data set, then you look into it and find that there's 30% or above of the missing data, then you drop it. Uh, there's no specific answer I can give you to that, but you, it depends with the situation and the understanding of, of um, the project that you're working on, the understanding of the challenge that you're working on. So you're able to uh, to see at the end of, uh, in, in the process of you doing your data, um, your data cleaning to know that this type of data, uh, it has got, in as much as it has got this number of missing values uh, or missing data types or missing data, I will still need it because it is important. So I have to fix it. So it is important that it is dependent on the situation that you're working on. Okay, so um, I don't know, do, do you have another question? Okay, so um, if um, we don't have any other question, um, one last thing, as, as you go through uh, the week's challenge, uh, especially in uh, understanding, as, as Yaba Bell said in the morning, uh, you have to get to know that what is it that I want to answer uh, in this project or in this uh, situation that we have. So that the understanding of, of of what you want to achieve at the end of the day is quite important. And that is why um, the understanding what you want to answer is, 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 it is it is key so that you get to understand that what type of data uh, will I need in this kind of prediction? Uh, what kind of data must I have so that I can be able to visualize and see whatever is happening? What type of data um, do I need to fill um, or do I need to give a forward fill? Do I need to uh, give a backward fill or the type of fixing that you want to give to, to that data set? And also it is important for you to uh, get to understand the different columns of the given data that you have um, so that you are able to see that in my data, uh, in my data set that have been given and the kind of challenge that this company has, uh, this is um, 
the particular set that I have to concentrate on. So um, I will still urge the verse that get to understand whatever you are working on, even as you do your, um, even as you do your, your, your data cleaning. Uh, and the data cleaning, uh, the data transformation and extraction, and thereafter you get to now visualize that data so that you get to understand it better. So um, I think if there's no further question, um, maybe we could stop at that point. Okay, so it looks like there's no further question. Uh, maybe we can stop at that point and um, then we can get back to work. Um, for more assistance on whatever challenge that you face, I think there's a question here, what about outliers? How should we manage them? Um, so that, that, that is when um, the, where the normalization also comes in so that you are able to see that this one is uh, an outlier, get to understand um, is it really normal with the type of column that I'm working with for this kind of uh, data point that I have and then you are able to normalize it so that you be able to see uh, that this um, maybe is uh, uh, maybe I could drop it because it looks quite exorbitant or maybe you can keep it uh, depending on the type of, of the column that you're working on. So I know with the, with uh, given certain given types of data, uh, you find uh, certain outliers that are just exorbitant. So you can, in the same way you deal with your, your, missing, your missing data. So you can decide to uh, give it enough scale or you can decide to normalize. Uh, you, you, at the end of the day, you will have to normalize so that you have um, uh, the same kind of a distribution. So um, I think that will bring us to the end of uh, our presentation for today. So um, we can proceed to um,